Hello everyone. I hope this message finds you fit and fine. In our previous video, we were discussing President of India in this Lakshmi Khan series. Today, we need to talk about the second part, the important area, powers of Honorable President. Some of you might be thinking, sir, we were thinking that President don't have any power, real power in the hands of Prime Minister. Yeah, real power, powers are in the hand of Prime Minister, means to run this government. But President do have, you know, some power and there's diversity there. Executive power, legislative power, judicial power, financial power, diplomatic power, military power, uh, emergency power. There's variety there. So let's understand them one by one. Along with this discussion, we are going to actually read the lines of Lakshmi Kant as well. Okay, to make you understand them better. We are, I'm also going to pinpoint on some trap areas on which UPSC likely to make question. And we are going to practice some MCQs as well. Let's start with a simple power, diplomatic power. Those who aspire to become, say, officer of Indian Foreign Service. So what is the highest position you want to achieve in your diplomatic career? Diplomatic career, I'm saying. So you would say, sir, foreign secretary. But before that, you need to become ambassador, right? India's topmost diplomatic official in other nations. So there's a trajectory in this diplomatic career that people who get appointed as India's ambassador to uh, US, the, the, there's a high probability that these people, you know, rise to become foreign secretary if they have this, uh, you know, service left. Now, consider that you are becoming ambassador to US. Who is going to give you official letter? Official letter is going to be given by Honorable President, right? Second, if America is sending some diplomatic official as ambassador, to India, then this person need to visit to our Honorable President, present this letter. Sir, this letter is from our President. Please accept me as ambassador of US in India. Then, then that person is accepted, right? So it means one is exchange of diplomatic, top diplomatic officials. Apart from this, all international treaties, agreements are signed in the name of Honorable President. Although these treaties need to be ratified by Parliament as well at the later stage, so you can consider that at in international sphere, president represents India as a state. Okay, so these are the points. Clear? I think it is quite clear if you just remember the keywords: international treaty and agreement sign the name of president, exchange of top diplomatic officials, president represents India in international sphere. Okay. Now, military relations. Just remember three points, three key po key points. President is the supreme commander of our defense forces. Okay, supreme commander, topmost position. All the chiefs, air force, navy, right? So uh, army, so they are appointed by honorable president. War is declared as well as concluded by honorable president. Although it is ratified by parliament as well at later stage. But please remember, these are the three, you know, parts which come under military power of honorable president. Clear? Executive power. So there's a list here. And here we need to go one by one. Okay. I'm going to simplify each and everything for you. And you need to just grab some keywords so that it is this knowledge is structured in your mind and readily used in your exam. First point in executive power is all executive decisions of government of India are taken in the name of president because constitution says so. Right. Now, now, if you just check, make rules, make rules. Which rules we are talking about? Make rules is specifying the manner. So who is making rules? President of India. So President of India make rules is specifying the manner in which orders and other instruments made and executive in his name be authenticated. This point is related to the first point. You are making orders, executive decisions in the name of president. But the process which is going to be used in this is going to be decided by Honorable President. Although, President is going to not going to decide this rule uh, on its own, on his own. Obviously, on the aid and advice of Council of Ministers. But rule need to be signed by Honorable President. Make rules for more convenient transaction of business. So here, business does not mean the real business, means business in the normal sense. Okay, business means the working of the union government or for allocation of said business among the ministers. So it means the duties, responsibilities of the union government and sharing them among ministers. So rules regarding this are made by honorable president. Okay. 
So first point is in the name of president. Second is make rules. Okay, please remember. In your Lakshmi Kant, this make rules part, this word is going to be used at two places. One in executive power and second in legislative power. Then some of you might be thinking, sir, then make rules will be under executive power. How we are going to remember it? It is quite easy. In these both points, we are talking about making rules with respect to executives. Temporary executive, ministers, government, executive, right? And there we are going to talk about making rules with respect to legislature. Okay, difference is this. We are on the executive side as of now. Okay. Next appointments. Appointments of Prime Minister, Minister, uh, CEC, UPSC Chairman, CAG. So all these executive positions, the appointment are done by Honorable President. So PM, C COM, AG, CAG, CEC, Governor, Chairman, FC, uh, you can remember UPSC, Chairman for uh, National Commission for SC, National Commission for ST. So all these commissions, Chairman, who appoints them? Honorable President. And it is quite easy to remember because individually when you read these chapters, there you are going to find this detail again and again and it will be imprinted in your mind. No need to worry. But please remember, appointment to these executive, executive positions come under executive power of Honorable President. Clear? Now, as I explained to you, appointment of CAG, UPSC Chairman, this is written. Now, seeking any information relating to administration of affairs. So, with respect to taking information from Prime Minister regarding Council of Minister, what particular ministry is doing, or uh, asking Honorable Prime Minister that one minister has had proposed some time back this particular proposal. What is the status? Is Council of Minister has discussed it or not? So it means this information, seeking information from Council of Minister is also executive power of Honorable President. And Council of Minister is executive, right? And its link with President will come under executive power. Clear? Just remember this. Can appoint commission to investigate to conditions of SCs and STs. A, a separate commission can also be uh, uh, made or you can say appointed by Honorable President. Can appoint interstate council to promote center state and interstate cooperation. We discussed in center state relations as well, right? Appointed by Honorable President. So this appointment of commission by Honorable President will also come under executive power because we are talking about executive branch. These commissions are not there to make law. Right? These commissions are there to just check whether the laws which were made are being implemented or not. Whether we can actually find out solution between the ongoing dispute. Right? He administers the union territories through administrators appointed by him. For example, Lakshweep, Anman Nicobar. So these UTs are being governed by, say, Lakshweep. Administrator is there. So administrator is representing whom? Honorable President. Working on the pleasure, pleasure of Honorable President. Right? So directions can be given to that administrator. Can declare any area scheduled area and has powers with respect to scheduled areas and scheduled tribe. If one area is declared as scheduled area, then special protection will be given to that area. Who has this power? President has this power, right? And here he is not making any law, he's just declaring an order. Now coming to the financial power. So I think it is clear. You are going to remember in, in name of president making rules, these two areas, appointment, seeking information from COM, then appointment of these commissions, interstate council investigating of SCST, right? And this declaring scheduled area. I hope now it is clear to you, right? Financial power. Any money bill which is presented in Lok Sabha need prior assent, prior recommendation of honorable president. So money bill is ready to money, finances. So this comes under financial power. Budget. Budget is presented in Lok Sabha before prior recommendation of Honorable President. Comes under financial power. Grants. If certain, if government needs certain amount from Consulate Fund of India to be used as a grant, then it needs to be uh, this approval of president is mandatory. Prior approval is president of president is mandatory. It means coming under financial power. Then Consulate Fund of India. As you know, there are three funds, three prominent funds. One is Consolidated Fund of India. The word is Consolidate. 
It means all the revenues from tax, non-tax receipts, they are coming under this consolidated fund, right? Uh, for example, income tax, GST, right? These revenues are coming under consolidated fund of India. Okay, from there, budget is allocated and this then this money is transferred to different departments. Now, second is public account. Public account is, for example, a small saving scheme, PF. From your salary, when you're going to get the job or those who are doing job, a small amount is deducted from your salary every month. Where does it go? It goes to one organization, EPFO, Employee Provident Fund Organization. So EPFO manages this fund. It means this fund is with government. Now tell me, this, this fund is of government only or this fund belongs to you? This fund belongs to you, to public. But this is being managed by government, right, as a saving. So that is why it is called public account. Can government spend money from this fund? Yes, but there are some guidelines, right? So this is public account. Then third is contingency. Contingency is itself word represents O's. Oh, there's some emergent circumstances. There's shortfall in fund with different, some ministry and they need immediate fund. So this is consolidated fund. So this fund is with Honorable President and on the on the behalf of Honorable President, Finance Secretary, it means topmost official of Finance Ministry manages this fund. Okay, so this is consular fund. So this is special power with Honorable President. So this comes under financial power. So what is the corpus of contingency fund as of now? What amount is managed as consular contingency fund as of now? Comment in. And I'll just mention comment box. Answer is 200 crore. Now, Finance Commission. Finance Commission is also appointed by Honorable President. It means it also comes under financial power. Okay. Now, legislative power. Another important part. So, I'm going to tell you three words. Summon, prorogue, dissolve. Summon means to call the session. Can Parliament work without calling? No. The first step is you need to call the session of parliament. Then only people will come, right? So who does the summoning? President does. So it comes under legislative power because it is, it is dealing with legislative branch, right? Like we were earlier discussing matters related to executive branch and wherever president was involved, what we were calling executive power, right? Here in legislative branch, wherever president is going to be involved, we are going to call it legislative power. Okay. So summon. Calling, prorogue, ending, ending the session, right? So this comes under legislative power. There's another word, dissolve. But we do not use the word dissolve with Rajya Sabha. We do use the word dissolve only with Lok Sabha, right? Because Rajya Sabha is a permanent house. There's no point where there's no member in Rajya Sabha. So we are going to discuss why it works like this. What was the idea behind this? We are going to discuss this in Parliament chapter. So Lok Sabha is dissolved, right? So when Lok Sabha is dissolved, so this comes under legislative power of Honorable President. Okay, so three words, summon, prorogue and dissolve. Now, he can address the House on the commencement of first session. When I say first session, there are two meanings. Number one, first session of every year, first session after general assembly elections. So there president goes there and present his speech. So since at this point president is engaging in legislative branch, that is why it comes under legislative power of honorable president. Okay. He can send message to the houses of parliament whether with respect to a bill pending there or not. Means if there's some bill pending, so he can send message, give me the status, what is happening with them, with those bills. So that they can expedite this process considering the respect to the office of president. Okay. He can appoint member of Lok Sabha as presiding officer. Someone need to preside the house, right? So he can appoint when the office of both speaker and deputy speaker fall vacant. So you know that speaker works as presiding officer of Lok Sabha. In his absence, deputy speaker. If they are not there, then president can appoint. So, since engaging in legislative branch, that is why legislative power. Similarly, he can also appoint any member of the Rajya Sabha 
to preside over its proceedings when the office of both chairman and deputy chairman fall vacant. So in this case also, it is legislative power. He nominates 12 members in Raj Sabha. So since this power related to legislative branch, nomination of 12 members in Raj Sabha, it comes in the legislative power of Honorable President. He decides on questions to disqualification. In parliament chapter, we are going to discuss disqualification of members of parliament. Then I'm going to tell you the ways a person, a particular member can be disqualified. So if that person is being dis disqualified on any matter related to, uh, say, constitutional, we, the qualifications mentioned in constitution, now this person is not following that, then that person can be disqualified. Also matters mentioned in Representation of People Act, right? So in these two cases, election commission may recommend to the Honorable President, sir, please disqualify this member. So in this case, this power is going to come as regarded as legislative power. For example, if you search on Google, disqualification of 21 AAP MLAs from Delhi. So who actually pronounced this decision that these 21 AAP MLAs stands disqualified on the, on the basis of using office of profit? The decision was taken by Honorable President on the advice of election commission. Since this decision is related to legislative branch, it comes under legislative power of Honorable President. Clear? His prior recommendation and permission needed to introduce certain type of bills. Which kind of bills? For example, bill involving expenditure from consulate fund, I, I just told you. So, this power comes under financial power as well as this legislative power. Okay, a bill for the alteration of boundaries of state. If you remember when I was discussing Article 3, Article 4, we talked about it. Creation of new state. When a bill is sent to the president, what options president has? Consider, I'm president. Okay. You never know what happens next. Right? Life gives surprises. So now, I'm president. I received this bill. Right? So, bill is always, you know, several laws, certain sections compiled in this manner. Now, what choices I have? Either I sign this bill and it becomes an act, right? Or I withhold my assent that, oh, I'm suppressing this bill. Or I don't do anything. It just sit on my table, right? So, it means give assent to the bill. Withhold assent to the bill means negation. Return the bill. Return the bill means I'm giving it back to you that, uh, for example, I received this bill from Lok Sabha. I'm giving it, the, it back for reconsideration. I may also give certain advices. Okay. It is up to you whether you accept that or not, such as the status of Honorable President in this area for reconsideration of the parliament. Right. So here you can see there are three options given. Okay. Give assent to the bill, sign the bill, and it becomes an act. Withhold assent to the bill, negation, and reconsideration of the parliament, sending the bill back for the reconsideration. I also give you another option, means not doing anything with the bill. Not doing anything with the bill. So that is pocket veto. I'm going to discuss this in detail soon when I'm going to discuss veto. Now, there are cases as well. Means UPSC has made statements like uh, with respect to withholding the bill. So, withholding the bill as a power of legislative power of uh, Honorable President can be used on which which scenarios. Then they give options like private member bill, government bill, even when council of minister is advising Honorable President to give assent. Government bill, where this government bill belongs to the previous government. And polity is quite easy. You just need to understand it with the logic. Just grab the logic and it is sorted. And we are going to understand the logic. If the bill is passed again by the parliament, consider I send this bill back for reconsideration and you again pass the bill. Now, can I resend this back? No. The president has to give assent to the bill. Now, second time I have to give assent to the bill and this apply only when I'm talking about that, I'm sending this back for back for reconsideration. Okay. When a bill passed by state legislature is reserved by the president, you know that a bill is 
um, cleared by state legislature, presented to governor, and governor reserve it for the president. Then what president can do? Give assent to the bill. You know, in that cases where governor thinks, oh, this particular bill is in contravention to some, some central law, that is why I'm, I want this bill to be given to honorable president. Then president can sign the bill, it becomes act. Withhold the assent to the bill. Not doing anything, suppressing the bill. Okay. Please remember, some people get confused with the withhold. They think it is negating or it is pocket veto. Actually, there's no term pocket veto mentioned in our constitution. It is actually, you can say, understood when nothing is done to a bill for a longer period of time, then it is considered, oh, it is under pocket veto. There's no explicit announcement by government or explicit announcement by honorable president that, oh, I'm using pocket veto here. Okay. Direct the governor, return the bill. Right. So third option can also be used. But please remember this third option. Direct the governor means I am president and I am receive I received this bill as a state legislative bill from governor. So I can send this bill back. But if it is a money bill, money bill, then we cannot use it. Means then we cannot return the bill. Direct the governor to return the bill if it is not money bill for reconsideration of the state legislature. Now some of you might be thinking, sir, why it is written it is not money bill? Simple reason is money bill deals with expenditure which may be more important for the government of the state to be used, right? If they are raising this money bill, it means they are demanding money from consulate fund of state. So at this point, their time need not to be wasted. That you want to give them bill, the bill back and then this bill will come again. What about the time? Right. So that is why either you accept it or reject it. You cannot actually send this bill back for reconsideration. OK, in money bill, you, should, you need to be straight. I'm talking about president's power with respect to bill on state legislature. Bill of state legislature. I hope it is clear to you. It is a good point where UPSC can play. Clear? It should be noted here that it is not obligatory for president to give his assent even if the bill is against pa passed by state legislature. And this is the difference between this uh, when a bill is given to honorable president by union legislature and bill is given back by state legislature. In case of union legislature, I once sent back and then they again passed. I was bound to sign the bill. But in state legislature, this is our state, right? Not equal in terms of, you know, a value with the union legislature. So in this case, if they are sending the, this bill back to the president through governor, sir, I, we have reconsidered and we don't want to change. So in this case, president is not bound to sign this bill, right? But in case of union legislature, if this bill is coming second time, then president is bound. Okay, please remember this. He can promulgate ordinance. Ordinance, you remember? It's like a stopgap solution when both the houses or one house is not in session. And if house is not in session and government wants some law need to be law to be passed, how are we going to pass that law? If house is not in session and there's you know need, immediate need. So in this case, our constitution gave this tool of ordinance. You can say temporary law. So he can promulgate ordinance when parliament is not in session. But please remember the detail I told you. UPSC play on those details. Parliament is not in session. It means both the houses are one house. Because you cannot make a law by one house. Right? At the level of parliament. These ordinances must be approved by parliament within six weeks. Please remember. Because it's a stopgap solution. When parliament is going to be reconvened, session is going to be reconvened, within six months you have to get this ordinance passed. He can also withdraw an ordinance at any time. Ordinance was passed, a temporary law, and then president himself can decide, declare. On the advice of council minister, now I'm declaring repealed. He lays the report of the CAG, UPSC, Finance Commission, and others before the parliament. This line we are going to read in these chapters as well. So you need to remember, oh, this line is related to what? This power means legislative power because interaction is happening with legislative branch. Clear? He can make regulations for peace, progress, good governance. 
वेयर अंडमान निकोबार लक्षद्वीप दमन एंड दीव एंड पुंडिचेरी एज वेल ओके इट स्पेसिफिकली मैंशन यू शुड रिमेंबर हु प्रिसाइड्स ओवर द ज्वाइंट सिटिंग दिस क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम पार्लियामेंट चैप्टर बट वी शुड एक्चुअली स्टार्ट ग्रिलिंग अराउंड इट बिकॉज वी नीड टू डिस्कस पार्लियामेंट राइट just tell me what is joint sitting i told you that's why i asked this i told you na when a bill is passed by lok sabha and stuck in rajya sabha ordinary bill and it's been more than 6 month and this condition is a deadlock condition then president can call joint sitting so here president is calling joint sitting it means calling joint sitting is a legislative power of president please remember it now who presides over this joint sitting means who is going to be in the chair when both the houses are going to sit together and discuss this bill which which is actually creating some deadlock between them answer is speaker of lok sabha okay and if speaker of lok sabha is absent what is going to who is going to actually preside over the joint sitting then deputy speaker of lok sabha and if deputy speaker is absent then deputy chairman of rajya sabha have i mentioned rajya sabha chairman who is vice president no please remember these details and there's a logic behind it a speaker of lok sabha if you compare lok sabha and rajya sabha who has more strength lok sabha right then deputy speaker is given preference then deputy chairman why not chairman because deputy chairman is a member of rajya sabha whereas rajya sabha chairman position is ex officio position given to vice president so vice president is not an elected or nominated member of rajya sabha and if we are convening joint sitting only member should be present clear how many members can a president nominate in lok sabha come on i also mentioned this in my previous lecture answer is none why earlier two positions of anglo indians were there but in 2020 government removed them so it means as of now no there's no nominated position in lok sabha now let's talk about judicial position judicial power he appoints chief justice so when i say judicial immediately your mind works oh now sir is going to talk about pardoning power respite reprieve commute there's a lot of confusion there now sir is going to clear that i'm going to clear that but please remember judicial power is more than that it means now any engagement of honorable president in judicial branch will be termed as judicial power of honorable president for example appointment of chief justice of india judges of supreme court high court judicial power seeking advice from supreme court although that advice is not binding on honorable president okay he can grant pardon now comes this mercy petitions in picture which you were waiting for so we are going to discuss about them in detail in pardoning power means pardon reprieve respite remission commutation coming to emergency power i'm going to discuss about them in detail okay because uh, there's good scope of questions from here i'm going to compare with these powers uh, of president with the power of governor as well emergency power we discussed in the emergency chapter in detail national emergency president rule and financial emergency two videos are in playlist lakshmi gan series check out those who have not now comes the veto power what is the meaning of veto power take your example you along with your friends were making a plan that oh uh, we should go goa this time okay so all is sorted you know finances are arranged everything is set but one thing you missed you missed asking your parents permission now you you went to your parents you know uh, you were sitting on the dinner table and you asked uh, i have to go to goa and everything is planned this person is going this person is going and all the ideal kind of friends of yours you named them right this is what we use tactics we use but parents said no you said everything is arranged they said no means no now your plan is cancelled that is veto power of your parents at any point if they say no it means plan is quashed so president do have some veto power with respect to certain bills right these bills 
All bill passed by the parliament need to be present before the president. Then only they can become act. Right? This is quite clear. And president can use veto. But before understanding veto, we should know what choices he has or she has. Can give assent. Okay, then it becomes an act. Withhold assent. Now this bill is going not going to become act. Return the bill for reconsideration has to give accent to the bill reconsidered. I have already told you. Send the bill back for reconsideration. Again, it comes back. Sign this bill. I am talking about bill coming from union legislature to the president. The, does the president have the power to withhold the assent to the bill? That is veto power. Veto power. It prevents hasty and ill-conceived legislation. Why this was made? Why president was given this power to withhold or send back for reconsideration? So that if there is some loophole in the bill as well, then this can be highlighted at this stage. Prevents unconstitutional legislation. Okay. Although we have additional layer of safety there, but even if president signs the bill, then there is Supreme Court sitting there and they are going, they, they can review and declare this null and void if this is unconstitutional, right? But there is a check here also. There are four kinds of vetoes, which president of India has three kinds of vetoes. Fourth veto is present with president of USA. Absolute veto, suspensive veto, pocket veto. President of USA also has qualified veto. I'm going to discuss about that as well. Now, qualified veto, which can be overridden by higher majority. For example, if uh, you have presented me a bill and you got 52% majority while you actually cleared this bill from legislature. I'm US president now. I send this bill for reconsideration as a qualified veto. Now, when this bill is received back to me by 60% majority, means 8% more people, more legislative mem branch members have voted for it. Now I have to clear it. So it means this majority part works there. Okay. But in case of the suspensive veto, suspensive veto means sending this bill for, back for reconsideration. In this case, there is no need to actually clear this bill with more majority this time. If you cleared with 51% major, majority earlier. You, I received the bill. I received this bill. I send this bill back. You again send this bill back to me with 51% majority. I am bound to sign this bill. Right? That is suspensive veto. Absolute veto. So let's understand them one by one. Power to withhold assent to the bill. It's like president is saying, no, I'm not going to sign. But from where Paul, the, our president gets so much you know, guts to actually say this to council of ministers? So there are cases involved. I'm going to talk about. Bill ends and doesn't become an act. Which case? Private member bill. It means if a bill was from any was raised or tabled by someone who is not a minister, then it may be possible that council of minister, which supported this bill to get passed from Lok Sabha and then Ras Sabha, now council of minister advises honourable president, sir, withhold this bill. Then even though this bill came at the stage of president, it will be withholded. Second case can be, consider that this government actually proposed a bill from Lok Sabha, then it passed from Raj Sabha, presented before Honorable President, but before President could sign this bill, government got dissolved. Right? There was fresh election. After fresh election, new government was formed from other party. So President has done nothing with that bill until now. When President was asked, was, was, uh, when they got the list, which which bills are with honorable president so they they got to know oh, this bill is honorable president now the new go new government will say for example congress government right uh, what is harm in thinking so now they are going to say that president sir you have to withhold this bill then president is going to withhold that bill even though that bill was government bill but that was raised by earlier government right suspensive veto you can easily remember the word suspensive comes from the word suspend and suspend itself is a temporary provision. For example, when you are going to get into service, there may be some time where you are going to get suspended and there is nothing wrong in getting suspended if you are correct, right? There will be inquiry and then you will be reinstated. So your suspension, this word represents temporary removal, right? So similarly, when a particular bill was received by Honorable President and he sent that bill for reconsideration, so that is temporary rejection. When this bill is going to come back, then president is going to sign this bill. 
So returns the bill for reconsideration can again pass. Then he has to give his assent. Cannot return money bill for reconsideration. Now, suspensive veto cannot work on money bill. Means, if this bill which I received, which I smartly actually sent it, sent that back by using suspensive veto, if that bill is money bill, as per Article 110 of Indian Constitution, then I cannot send this bill back for reconsideration. And you are going to ask why? Because money bill is introduced in Lok Sabha by prior recommendation of President. Right? If it was introduced by my prior recommendation, why I'm going to waste time in using suspensive veto now? Right? Pocket veto. It means taking no action. Bill, no action was taken by president. President neither gives assent nor withhold assent. And this bill is pending indefinitely. In reference to pocket veto, it's, it is said that India's president's pockets are way deeper than US president's pocket. Because in case of US president, there's a limit till what, till what time no action can be actually taken by honorable president in case of a bill which is pending. But there's no limit which is mentioned by our constitution with respect to our president. That is why a bill can remain pending for indefinite period. For 24th Constitutional Amendment Act 1971, President has to give assent to Constitutional Amendment Bill. So this was a time of Indira Gandhi ji. She said, in case of Constitutional Amendment Bill, President has to give assent. No choice. In case of USA President, they have to send, you know, they have to take action within 10 days. Return the bill means suspensive qualified can be used, but you cannot do anything for, you can say, more than 10 days. Presidential veto over state legislation. I told you one case, right? Now let's discuss them in detail. A bill passed by state legislature becomes an act after it receives governor's assent. But there are cases where governors reserve the bill for honorable president. So when it is received, president can give assent, withhold assent, direct the governor to return the bill, but not in case of money bill told you. Constitution does not prescribe time limit. This is important. In which the president has to take decision. And that is why sometimes this provision is misused. A state's bill may be stalled. Right? Ordinance making power of honorable president, article 123. And we are going to discuss ordinance making power of governor in article 213 later. So, ordinance has same force as an act. I told you it's like a temporary law. Most important legislative power of president. Most important. Meant to deal with unforeseen urgent circumstances. UPSC has asked questions in prelims as well as mains on ordinance making power. Let's talk about limitation. President can promulgate ordinance only when, I told you, both houses or either house. Means one house is not in session. It means, yeah, genuinely, we cannot make law as of now. Right. So in this case, yes, president can actually pass an ordinance on the means what is going to happen. This council of minister at the level of union, they are going to present bill directly before president. And they will say, sir, we'll actually go for this Lok Sabha, Ras Sabha route later. Please sign this bill and declare this as law, as an ordinance. President can make ordinance only when he is satisfied the circumstances exist. We are making this, taking this house route is not possible. Now, in this Cooper case, please remember, because UPSC asked question, match the following kind of questions on cases as well. Cooper case, Supreme Court said it is not cool. What is not cool? It is not cool to actually president, you know, using this uh, ordinance making power without actually having sound base. It means SEL that president satisfaction can be questioned on the malefice. You're not having sound base. Why you actually use ordinance? You could have used this route of uh, Lok Sabha, Ras Sabha. You could have convened the session. You deliberately did not convene the session and use this ordinance route so that you can bypass Lok Sabha, Ras Sabha. It may be possible that party in power is not having majority in Ras Sabha. So they thought, oh, if even if you get passed it, get it passed from Lok Sabha, then this bill will be stuck in Ras Sabha. Let's use this ordinance route. So Cooper case, Cooper case, Supreme Court said, it's not cool. We can actually check the malefice. That president has deliberately promulgated an ordinance in controversial subject, bypass the authority of parliament. This is a misuse. Means questions are asked here. Ordinance making power is 
कोएक्सटेंसिव इन ऑल रिगार्ड्स एक्सेप्ट ड्यूरेशन विद द लॉ मेकिंग पावर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट इट मींस इट इज नॉट अल्टीमेट इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू देयर इज अ लिमिटेशन टू दैट व्हाट इज द लिमिटेशन दैट व्हेन पार्लियामेंट इज गोइंग टू कन्वीन विद इन सिक्स वीक्स यू हैव टू गेट दिस ऑर्डिनेंस पास फ्रॉम देयर अदरवाइज इट विल सीज टू गेट एग्जिस्ट पार्लियामेंट हैज इवन Uh, government has many time played smart even that case also i'm going to talk about dc badwa case now an ordinance can be issued only on those matters upon which parliament has power to legislate not on stateless subject now please remember this is a trap statement upsc may play with you at this point how they may say since it is this statement is clearly written lakshmi kan to so those you are going to read this so this is a snapshot from lakshmi kan itself but now i am making a statement you have to tell me the statement is true or false upsc will say ordinance ordinance making of ordinance making power of president in any case cannot extend to state list comma this ordinance making power can only be applied on union list now tell me the statement is true or false you will say that it is true because you are saying that ordinance making power of president does not extend to state list yes and it, it is this statement is saying ordinance can be issued only on those matters upon which parliament can legislate not on state list subject it is clearly is what is trap here my friends the statement is wrong because this statement is made only with respect to president chapter but when we discussed if you remember emergency provisions president rule state emergency so when there is no state government there and there is no parliament in session then 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 in this case president can actually uh, promulgate an ordinance on a matter in state list as well so it means there is a possibility there yes president can do that in that case but when this statement was made like i said president in any case cannot legislate cannot actually uh, promulgate ordinance in state list so cannot in any case no there is a case just i just shared with you right so this is how upsc play okay ordinances are subject to the same constitutional limitation means review can happen judicial review can happen okay it can be declared null and void every ordinance issued by president has to be laid before parliament house when the parliament reassembles if it is approved by parliament then it becomes act if parliament takes no action then it ceases to operate after 6 weeks of reassembly now if i ask about the maximum time maximum life of an ordinance so this can be 6 months 6 weeks why because within 6 weeks parliament has to give assent and if parliament is going to get give assent means lok sabha rajya sabha are passing it then definitely it can convert into an actual act and why the 6 months because maximum time period between two sessions of parliament can be 6 months within 6 months you have to reassemble parliament that is the direction of our constitution right so ceases to operate earlier if both the houses dis disapprove it maximum life told you UPSC has asked statement statement question on this. If an ordinance lapses, then acts done before it lapses remains valid and effective. Please remember it also, because the actions which were taken by different functionaries exercising power from that ordinance they will remain valid because this was taken when that particular ordinance was actually working as a law. So that is why they will remain valid. The president can also withdraw an ordinance at any time. ordinance can be retrospective retrospective it means from back date please remember retrospective in civil cases right can modify repeal an act of parliament or another such is the power of ordinance right now ordinance making power is not discretionary 
it means president has to act on the aid and advice of council of minister already told you ordinance making power of president is unusual means it is not usually found in democratic societies why because democracy means parliament people elected you know, by people representatives elected by people they should have power with respect to law making process so it it means we, you are clear with the provisions with respect to ordinance now dc vadhva case take a look what supreme court said successive promulgation of an ordinance what happened that even if a particular ordinance is not cleared by parliament six week happened within six weeks you need to get it passed but this particular government is not presenting this particular bill over or ordinance for getting it passed from lok sabha or rasabha what they are doing they are again actually bringing it before honorable president sir please promulgate it again so this would be actually against the against this it would be considered unconstitutional an attempt to get bill passed by assembly parliament around violation of the constitution who said this dc vadhva case clear exceptional power of law making through ordinance cannot be used to substitute the ordinary legislative power i think it is clear now pardoning power so president can grant grant pardon so it is a broad word mercy right within that we use the word pardon commutation so it may be possible that you were pronounced you not you someone else were pronounced say so now we need to talk about pardoning power of president consider someone gets life imprisonment from high court appeal in supreme court then again life imprisonment so possibility is given to that person that that person can appeal before honorable president for mercy because there can be an error of judgment there can be you can there can be a fault in the judicial process which can be corrected at the lord of president but you should remember that president is independent of judiciary you should not consider that this is a proper judicial process that there will be a court of president where going you where that person is going to appeal before honorable president through an advocate no president is going to receive the case file okay so that is why it is an executive power not the full proof you know judicial process so president is not court of appeal it is not court of appeal okay objective of conferring this power to the president as i told you keeping the road open for correcting judicial error it may be possible afford relief from a sentence which the president regards unduly harsh there were cases for example if you search about dhananjay death sentence case so there was a guard in in this west bengal specifically in kolkata and that person was pronounced this uh, death sentence you know in a, a rape come murder case but after this this that sentence was given later some media group found out some proof and then case was reopened and it was found that that person did not committed this crime but that sentence was given so this this scope is there right so this scope can be removed there's a probability that it can be removed by listening to this or you can say going through this file and case case fact before honorable president although president does not act on his own discretion in this case right means council of minister has a role specifically home ministry okay so no right for oral, oral rehearing i told you exercise power and advice of union a right council of minister specifically home ministry not bound to give reason for his order right not bound to give an order means not if for example if president says oh i am pardoning this person absolving from all the you know all the foundations which was put completely removing life imprisonment now this person is free yes president can do that so president is not bound to give reason why president did that president can afford relief not only from a sentence but he consider unduly harsh but from what he consider as a mistake so in all the cases he can do that supreme court does not need to lay a specific guideline for the exercise of power of president please remember this because upsc play on these points supreme court does not need to lay specific guideline there's no role of judiciary here that's why i told you independent of judiciary right here i told you this is the meaning of that now if i ask whether this judgment can be considered under judicial review yes it is judicial review ground when presidential decision is arbitrary so judicial review applies there as well 
Don't think, oh, president is the topmost position that it is, this decision is going to be on judicial review. No, judicial review has. In an earlier petition, if an earlier petition is rejected, then the stay cannot be obtained by filing another petition. For example, if uh, this petition was presented before Honorable President, it was not accepted, then you cannot say, I'm filing another petition and meanwhile, give me stay. No, this cannot be a basis of, take, of taking stay from court just because you your petition is with President. Now, let's understand these words. What the mean? What the meaning of word pardon? Complete relief. Complete relief. You are free. It's like, Ja Simran Ja, Zile Apni Zindagi. Okay, the famous dialogue of DDLJ. Now, commutation. There's a trick there. Commutation you can remember with commute. Right? Commute means from one to another. That is what we call commute. So this way you can remember in commutation, there is actually change in the type of sentence. And sentence's type is changed and it is given at a lighter note. Then remission. Remission you can remember with emission. And all of you know that we need to reduce emission. So in this case, the type of sentence is not changed. It is just reduced. Reducing the period of sentence without changing the character. Clear? Respite. Despite. So, this is a trick I have given to you. Despite means. So, you can remember, oh, respite. Means despite a person, a, a lady is pregnant or a person is disabled, very old. Still, that person is in jail. Having this 14 years of sentence. So, in this case, on these grounds, a lesser punishment can be given. Right? Just to remember. Reprive. You can remember rip, zip. Zip means stay. Right? So, reprive is like putting a stay. Right? If you were given death sentence, no. Death sentence will not be given as of now. Okay? So, I hope now these five words and this meaning is clear to you. Now, Pardoning power and let's compare it with governor. President can pardon death sentence. Governor cannot pardon death sentence. President can pardon court martial. Governor cannot pardon court martial. President exercises judicial power in the punishment which is given under union law. Governor exercises power under punishment given under state law. Now I told you judicial review is applicable. Pardoning power of president are wider than governor. As I told you, it is applicable in death sentence as well as in case of court martial. Right? If the power is given absolute, so is president's pardoning power is absolute? No, absolute nahi hai. Because it may give right, right to arbitrariness. Home ministry can actually send this recommendation. Even this person is a hardcore criminal, this person is given death sentence. Then home ministry can give this recommendation. Please pardon that person. Just say that to that person, Ja Simran, Ja Zili Apni Zindagi. Now the Simran will go into society and create devastations. Right? So that is why this is not complete, this is not absolute. So, Eporu Sudhakar case, Supreme Court clearly said that we have to check on the pardoning power of the president. What kind of people are completely absolved from any kind of sentence by president? Judiciary can intervene to prevent him from actually doing arbitrary actions. Now, since we are done with the powers, now let's have a summary of president. Nominal executive of our parliamentary system, it is clear. This is the first word which I shared in the video one. President exercises functions with aid and advice of council of minister. He represents the nation but does not rule the nation. He is a symbol of nation. Executive power of the union vested in president shall be a council of minister to aid and advice. In 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act, Indira Gandhiji's time, President bound by the advice of Council of Minister. But in 44th Constitutional Amendment, Muradji Desai government came and they made this proposal. They actually made this amendment. It was a proposal earlier. President can request the Council of Minister reconsider its advice. But this reconsideration is once the reconsideration advice shall be binding. Means when it's coming back, then it will be binding. President has no constitutional discretion. But situational discretion means there are some situations in which president don't need advice of council minister. For example, if prime minister dies and the ruling party is not having any consensus whom they should actually consider as the leader of the house and then uh, declared as prime minister by honorable president. So there is no consensus on the leader. In this case, president can take call on discretion. Okay. Dismissal of the council of minister. If 
the the ruling government the ruling party they are not able to prove that they are having confidence in the house means they are having majority support in lok sabha in this case dismissal can happen dissolution of lok sabha in case they loses majority in the lok sabha right now just attempt this question council of minister in the center shall be collective responsible to the parliament statement is true or false false because the word is parliament council of minister is responsible to lok sabha right till the time they have majority in lok sabha they will remain in as council of minister union minister shall hold the office during the pleasure of president of india correct prime minister shall communicate to the president about the proposal for the legislation correct told you in the executive power info seeking right so answer is 2 and 3 2 and 3 so i hope now you are confident and clear with the president chapter if there is any doubt you can shoot me a message on my insta shashank.powerbeing and for this pdf you can take a look in shashank tyagi for you telegram group see you in the next video till then keep learning keep growing